discuss a little bit about making a really good uh, bed, uh, a stall at the show, and uh, a couple things we're going to cover. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you to everybody that shared that video we did last week. If you didn't get a chance to look at it, you can go back to our timeline there on Facebook. And uh, I think we had over a hundred people share it, and it was viewed by between 8,000 and 9,000 people. And uh, that just shows that we can we can help some kids out there. And I just appreciate you sharing that and reaching more people. So tonight we're going to talk about um, the show stall, um, securing a show stall, the panels, the bedding. Um, I want to start right now with the bedding. So um, right here we have some cedar fiber. This is what we use at home. Um, it's really good. It soaks up any urine, keeps the ammonia out of... Um, from smelling up in your barn. Um, it, it's, it's really good stuff. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, when we go to a show, we're gonna use a pine bedding. It's a little brighter, um, it's a little softer, um, it packs really well. Now we got two different kinds of bedding here. We've got our big flake and we got our mini kind of ground up stuff. Now we use tractor supply because it's right up the road, but um, any kind of shaving that kind of gets to something more like this, this stuff packs really well, this, this finer shavings. I don't probably like this as well because you just can't get it to pack. And we're going to discuss that a little bit here later on. But I wanted to let you know because a lot of times you got to buy your bedding before you get to a show. You also need to check with your show and make sure what kind of bedding you can use. If you have any option, I prefer this stuff. It does a really good job, again, of packing, keeps your cattle clean, and it stays bright. So now over here, one of the first things we're going to do is we need to decide how big to make our stall. So, for instance, this stall right here is gonna be big enough for like one big bread heifer. Um, if we had two baby calves, we could probably get away with two baby calves in here, maybe a five to 800 pounder. We get above that and we need to have a little bit more room. A lot of times when we're making stalls where we mess up is we don't leave ourselves enough room. The heifer has enough room to get up and lay down but we don't have enough room to work on that calf throughout the, the week. So again, make sure you leave yourself enough room. A lot of times we lay our mats down right here and kind of gauge how big we want to make those stalls and then put our side panels in. The first thing we're going to do before we ever lay any bedding or anything is we want to put our side panels in and secure them. So what I like to use are um, these hose clamps. Now. We used to just use some of this uh, baling wire and secure it. Why I like to use this is I've never had one of these come undone or break on me. They're really tough and you can reuse them every time you go to a show. So um, again, these are called hose clamps. You can get them at like a Home Depot um, and they come in different sizes. We've got a couple this size, a couple a little smaller, but all they do is, and you can use a regular screwdriver or we use this drill. And my um, brother-in-law, Rob Bruce, is the one that um, taught me this. And I think it's a, a great tool to use. But basically, this is just going to cinch down. And you can see where that cinches down. Now, if you come up here, we use this to secure this gate and this side panel. And it just cinches down. And you can see how stout that is. You're not going to be able to, if a heifer runs into this or bumps into it, they're not going to push that over. And so we've got... One here, one here, and one here. We got three to secure this side and three to secure that side. So the other thing it does is if a heifer were to get spooked and wanted to jerk back, it's not pulling this panel down on them. So we want to make sure just from a safety standpoint, it's not going to hurt you or the heifer. We need to make sure we get this secure. Now the other place we need to secure is back here on the other part of the side panel. If you're setting up on, on a dirt, um, you can go ahead and we like to use these stakes. So this this side panel has a stake that's driven down to about right here. We just drive that down in there. This one's already got it. You can see right there. And what that does is it keeps that calf from being able to push that out. So if you walk over here, we don't have a stake on this side. And if a calf lays down, it's able to push this side panel out. And we've kind of ruined our bedding already. So if we can put a stake in here, we drop that side panel down over that stake, keeps them from pushing that bed out. So that's a little bit about securing your, your 
side panels. Now that you've got those secured, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna lay these uh, mini, these mini shakes, uh, flakes. We're gonna lay those down. Now, in this whole bed, we've probably got nine or 10 bags of shaving. What we do is we wanna leave, kind of ramp it up. So we've got most of our shavings underneath their front legs, and then we kind of slope it back. The reason we do that is cattle always look better running uphill slightly. And so we don't want them to create kind of a hole where they look like the shoulder is their lowest point. And again, um, when we get that the shavings laid, we're gonna wet them down real good. So the first thing before we wet them down is you, you just wanna take your rake and make sure you ramp those up good. So make sure this is higher, level them out real good. We're gonna come back and grab our hose. We're gonna wet these shavings down really good. We wanna get these wet down super good. And we've already done this for you to save some time. But there's two different ways that we can pack these shavings. We like to, this is our roller packer. And all this is, is it's filled up with water. And you'll see these used around the show barn, and I really like these. Um, what it is, it's just a bunch of weight. And you're just going to use this to pack down those shavings. And I, know that, I know it doesn't seem much, but both of these sides started out the same. And you can see that after using this roller packer, and again, we don't need to use that roller packer. We can actually come in here and do it by foot. This is how we always used to do it. And um, you can see how this is packed down so that calf can't work its way down into like the dirt or cement at a show. Over here, you can see where it's not packed down as much. This side of the, um, of the stall hasn't been watered down a bunch and that calf can eventually work its way down, right down into the dirt or cement. We don't want these cattle getting down in the dirt and cement. We actually want those cattle to stand up on top of the bedding rather than down in it. The other thing it does is cattle tend to, um, if we don't get this pack real good, they tend to almost make divots down in that bedding or on that mat. So it's important to get that pack down really good. The other thing it does is when you're blowing your calf, you're not blowing dry shavings everywhere. So um, if you get that packed down really good that first time, you won't have, a, have to fight that the rest, of the, um, the rest of the show. Now, if you look up here, we've got a tarp. Now the first time I ever saw that was, I think Tony Jeffs and Skiles crew used that um, the first time. And I just thought that was really cool. So we went ahead and adopted that. There's a couple reasons I like that is, one, when you're putting on your bedding, it keeps your bedding from pushing underneath that gate and going underneath it. But the real reason I like it is, if you've got cattle that are tied on the other side with their head, so you've got your calf's head here, the other calf here, what happens is, if, uh, if somebody goes in and feeds their calf, your calf's gonna get up, because they're hungry. Um, when they come back from the wash rack and they're blowing their calf off or they're putting sheen or foam on that calf, it's going to inevitably get over to your calf. So a lot of what it does is it just contains everything from in, into your own stall. Your calf's not getting up and down because somebody's spooking it. A lot of times we've got feed alleys in the sh at a lot of these shows and people are walking up and down those feed alleys. So it just kind of keeps, um, keeps your stall contained to you and you got just less movement going back and forth. Now, one of the final things that I think is really important is these mats. So you'll notice on this mat over here, this is the mat mm -hmm. I prefer for a couple different reasons. One, um, when they have these holes in them, cattle stand on them a little bit more naturally. A lot of times if you get over onto these mats, cattle will want to just kind of toe out just a little bit and it'll kind of make them where they want to spread on those front end on their front end the biggest reason i like them is like on a steer sometimes they'll get sideways in this stall and they'll actually urinate on the mat and the holes if you have the one with the holes in it it'll actually obviously go down in it where this one over here it's going to puddle up on that mat so when you bring that calf back from the wash rack and it's dripping wet you're gonna see where that starts to accumulate on that mat, where on this one, it's just gonna go right down in it. So again, um, those are just a few tips on, on what we do to make our show stalls a little better. 
our cattle look nicer throughout the, the week on it. Um, you know, a lot of times you have to show for a couple days or three, four, five days at some breeding shows. But the reason we like to keep our stalls really clean, keep them neat, is one, it makes our job a lot easier when working those cattle throughout the week. As well, when people are coming by, say you're at a heifer show and you're trying to sell genetics on a female or embryos, stuff like that, um, you just want your calf to look its best through the entire week. Um, I know the judges are going to see that calf in the stall, but everyone else in the barn, I know a lot of people walk around the barn, they're looking for new genetics. Um, in fact, you might even be, um, you might be trying to promote, you know, half interest in a female or something. Um, either way, it's just good to present your animal all the time where it looks the best. So again, um, as long as we continue to see um, some positive feedback, again, last week it was great. We got um, a lot of questions, comments. Um, but feel free to, to ask some questions in the comment section. Uh, feel free to share it. We're just trying to spread um, a little bit of knowledge, get a few more um, kids involved. But again, um, I sure appreciate it. We'll have more videos coming. We're going to try to get one once a week for the next couple months. Um, so go ahead and like our page. For more information as well, you can go to the uh, winnersbrand.com and we've got all the pro staff members um, have some different videos up there as well. So if you're looking for some more information, that's a good place to go.